This is the sixth and final video in my series on overcoming social anxiety. In this video we will put together everything you have learnt and apply it to making conversation. First let's talk about expectations. No video or book is going to suddenly make you a great conversationalist, and you don't need to be. The aim is just to become more comfortable when making conversation. In video 5, we looked at gradually exposing yourself to anxiety-provoking situations so that you desensitise. You can do the same with conversations. At first, just join small groups and mainly listen. No one expects someone who is probably known to be a bit shy to suddenly lead the group conversation. But you can gradually increase your contribution over the months. But watch out for the safety behaviours that you learnt about in video 4. These are things like planning what to say, talking quietly, monitoring your body for symptoms, not making eye contact, analysing what you say before you say it. The last one is particularly destructive because by the time you have analysed what you're going to say, the conversation has moved on. So just take a risk and say it. Monitoring your symptoms and thinking about what to say means you miss a lot of what others are saying. So at first, just start getting used to focusing externally. Listen curiously to what others have to say. Just get used to being in a social situation. A small group of three or four is perfect for doing this. Don't focus on your anxiety symptoms. I guarantee you, no one will be focusing on them as much as you. In fact, they will be focused on the conversation. As you focus more externally, the anxiety symptoms will just fade into the background. Focusing on what others have to say makes it easier to make conversation in the future, but don't overdo it. If you are doing it just to plan a future perfect conversation, then that's a safety behaviour. Be genuine. Don't pretend to be interested in something just because someone else is. Once you start making conversation, you will naturally find common interests. Before we look at how to start conversations and dealing with the dreaded awkward silences, first let's deal with the inevitable negative thoughts. When faced with conversation, you will likely get all sorts of negative thoughts. But if you regularly challenge your thoughts using the thought records that I showed you in video 3, you will start to challenge your thoughts naturally without needing to write them down. As you get more comfortable, more used to contributing in small groups, Try making conversations where there are just two of you. But how do you start conversation? Using open-ended questions is a good way to start. It could be a simple, how are you? Often people who are natural conversation leaders will take it from there, but be sure to listen to their answer. Or ask something that is relevant or a common interest. Conversations are not meant to be interviews, so make sure you contribute also. And as soon as a reply pops into your head, don't delay it, just say it. This is actually a good example, because not only has Larry contributed, he has actually expressed a contrary opinion. That doesn't mean you should deliberately seek to contradict people, but it's a good experiment to show your opinions are valid, and it's okay to express them. If there is an awkward pause, just think about the last thing that was said. But if there's not much more to say about that subject, don't be afraid to change the subject. It's okay to bring up something about yourself. Or something the other person is interested in. Or something that is a common interest. There are no set rules for conversation. Try not to flee when there is an awkward gap, because it will increase the fear of future conversations. Revealing a few things about yourself can open up a conversation and might also prove that people might actually be interested in what you have to say. In this example, Larry has mentioned three things, and Steve picks up on one of them. But what about ending conversations? You don't need to give an excuse. Just say, nice talking to you, see you around, enjoy your day, or maybe something relevant to the conversation that you've just had. After a conversation, don't ruminate about what you should or shouldn't have said. Congratulate yourself for trying. Conversation gets easier the more you do it. As you get more confident, try throwing in some shame attacking experiments. I've not covered these in this video series, but I will put a link to an old video I made on this subject at the end. 
But what I'm talking about is making little faux pas by getting someone's name wrong. By deliberately making little mistakes, it disproves your belief that you have to be perfect or people will mock you if you get something wrong. I hope you have found this series useful. Watch it a few times to make sure you understand the theories, but more importantly start applying what you have learnt and using the CBT tools. It takes time, but applying CBT principles is an effective way of reducing social anxiety. The shame attacking experiments I mentioned earlier are a very powerful CBT tool, and you can watch the video here. For other videos on social anxiety, click on my social anxiety playlist here.